Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aiken and on this show each week we take a look at some upcoming races in Hong Kong and try to isolate an aspect of the race that might be a path to finding the winner. Well Saturday racing this week in Hong Kong and the first race we're going to look at is race 9 where our winning factor is the winner up in class. So this is a 1400 metre class two, plenty of quality and plenty of chances. There'll be cases made here for the chances of Fantastic Treasure back to 1400 metres, Dancing Code is racing well, horses like Supreme Lucky and Find My Love have chances, as will the race leaders I give and Lucky Encounter. But I'm most focused on the two last start winners up in class, Young Champion or the Douglas White trained Blue Marlin. So let's take a look at their last start performances in class three. Firstly, race 455, gate eight, black colours with white sleeves is young champion who jumps well for James McDonald. He's quickly amongst the leaders, though that task is made easier by the slowish tempo of the race, as we can see on the heat map. And he gets a great spot in fourth, following three leaders. In fact, he couldn't have had a better run. He travels beautifully and it's an easy watch for his supporters as he sprints well in the dash down the straight and is never really threatened. So after only two starts in Hong Kong, you'd think that young champion still has upside to come. Uh, that's not the case with Blue Marlin, who's more exposed. He's had 14 starts, but he has already won five of them, all of them over the Sha Tin 1400 metres. So let's have a look at his latest effort. This is race 474. He's in gate four with purple and red. And Blue Marlin is actually the last horse out of the gates for Hugh Bowman. He recovers to work up into midfield on the inside. And you note Bowman continues to pinch ground through the race despite a consistent good speed. So although he's making ground, he is burning up some energy doing that. Still, Bowman slides him through behind the leaders, ready to pounce at the 300 metres, and pounce he does. Getting clear, then holding off a late finish to scramble home narrowly. So, possibly not as impressive to the eye as the first replay we saw. However, I do think there was plenty of hidden merit to that after missing the start. So, uh, both of our horses carried big weights there. They dropped significantly in the handicaps going up in grade. And that's something we're always looking for on this show. So, we have two great chances. How do we start to separate them? Well, the map could be one way. Now there aren't many in this race with a lot of early speed, however I'm still looking at the pace as being faster than average because two of the front runners, I give and Lucky Encounter, are tackling 1400 metres for the first time. Both have uh, light handicaps, are very quick at 1200 metres and also like to fight their riders to go faster. Although Flaming Rabbit, the other potential leader, is no slouch early in a race, he might have to sit behind them or risk getting himself into a crazy speed battle. So here the draw comes into play, however, for young champion. His gait looks a touch sticky, though the field might spread out with the pace on and let him get in somewhere closer to the rail. But Blue Marlin, well, he gets the run that he wants in midfield behind the good pace. But as a clincher for our selection, I think we might get more bang for our buck with Blue Marlin, and this is why. This table compares performances with winners rising in class between Douglas White and John Size since Douglas White began training in 2019. As you can see, he has a small edge on the strike rate over Size, but as we often mention on this show, the appeal of the 12 times champion trainer for betters is always strong. Size runners are frequently over bet as a result, and we see here that White is also the one outperforming the expectations of the betting market. So the tip in race nine, Blue Marlin. His winning factor, the winner up in class. Now it wouldn't surprise me if either young champion or Blue Marlin won this race, but the draw is a little bit uh, of a sticky one for young champion. And I do think on the statistics that we've seen there that we get better value out of Douglas White runners. So Blue Marlin is the pick. The other race I want to take a look at is race 10. And our winning factor here, the draw. This is a handy class three over 1400 metres to finish the card and I think there'll be some fans of horses like Tamara Blitz, Flagship Warrior and Only You, the last start winner in class four rising in grade. As you can see, something we look for. But to me, the race is gonna come down to another horse coming up from class four, but without winning, the three-year-old wind cheater and also Zach Purton's mount, Sweet Briar. 
And Sweetbriar has been very consistent this season without winning. And uh, 1,400 metres has been a sweet spot for him in those performances before he tackled 1,600 metres for the first time last start. This is race 453. He's in light blue colours, gate four. And Sweetbriar is out quickly, but Lyle Hewitson doesn't want the lead. He's looking inside where he expects Frantank to take up the running, and he's right. Frantank goes through to set faster than average sections for the first three quarters of this race. But despite the good speed, Sweetbriar, up in distance here, wants to go faster, fighting with Hewitson, and there's going to be a price to pay for that later. In the home straight, he comes to make his bid, but is all out of petrol very quickly and just battles, though not beaten far, in a blanket finish. And that lack of a finish is where over racing in races does cost horses. So coming back to 1400 metres looks really suitable. Now Wind Cheetah, on the other hand, a veteran of only two starts, is a three year old with plenty of upside. He's tackling a new distance this time at the 1400 metres. So let's take a look at his most recent effort at 1200 metres. This is race 466, he's in gate nine with yellow colours and Luke Ferraris bounces him out looking to cross and lead and he does get the lead but he is made to earn it a little bit albeit in relatively steady initial tempo. But on the heat map he doesn't get any rest mid-race. As you can see there uh, he continues to gallop along at a good pace. So the question with him too is what will be left for the finish here and he certainly doesn't fold up. Oriental Smoke has had a softer run and proves just too strong in the two horse war down the stretch. So a terrific effort in defeat there by Wind Cheater. In fact in my view a better run than his win at his first start and he was only beaten by the race setup and I think that is his problem when we look at Saturday's race. Both horses have a change of rider and Harry Bentley probably has to accept that he won't be leading from an even wider draw in gate 11 on Winchita here with the regular front runner massive action in gate 1. Winchita does have the option to roll across to sit outside him but meanwhile Zach Purton on Sweet Briar you can see will be positioned right behind the leaders from his inside draw and this time back to 1400 metres and saving himself for the finish. So the tip from me in race 10, Sweet Briar. His winning factor, the draw. I've got a lot of time for Win Cheetah. I think he's a horse with a future. But last time he was beaten by the older, more experienced horse with the soft run behind him. I think that might be his fate again. Well, that's it from the winning factor this week. Enjoy Saturday's racing. We'll see you next time.